What up? Welcome into Offsides with Ethan Petrick on the Save Saturdays Podcast Network. We don't talk hockey on the Save Saturdays Podcast. However, you can catch me here every Monday talking hockey. First things first, let's start it off with a congrats to the champs. The Tampa Bay Lightning taking the Stanley Cup in the bubble. Taking on the Dallas Stars. Big, big contributions from Braden Point really helped seal the deal for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Braden Point, not a player normally considered to be a top offensive option for the Lightning. Nikita Kucherov, Steven Stamkos, usually pegged as those top options for that franchise. However, Braden Point really came out and really produced exceptionally for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Could could this be a sign of things to come for Braden Point in Tampa Bay? We will. That is yet to be seen. He's always been seen as a potential top six forward. However, could he be a top line forward? We'll see. You, you've seen a lot of guys in the past, Justin Williams, for an example, who have produced exceptionally in the postseason. However, never really match that kind of exceptional play in the regular season. There's no doubt that he's a solid option. However, could he be what he was in the bubble over an 82-game season? That's yet to be seen. That'll be a a storyline I'm going to keep an eye on throughout the next season. However, congratulations to the Stanley Cup champions. Undoubtedly deserved it. Going into the season, I thought the Boston Bruins were going to take it. They had a great roster. However, a couple of injuries, a couple of key key COVID opt-outs for that franchise paved the way for the Tampa Bay Lightning. They took it easily. Also, just a quick nod to the Dallas Stars. Not a team a lot of people had making the Stanley Cup Finals. Not a top team in the West by any stretch of the imagination. However, they go out, they make the Stanley Cup Finals and really surprise everybody in doing so. This is a defensive-focused team. We've seen a lot of movement toward offense recently in the NHL. However, Dallas Stars, defensive game, go out, make the Stanley Cup Finals, and they they get the Tampa Bay Lightning win it easily. However, the Dallas Stars did not look bad at all. They definitely looked like they deserved to be there. So congratulations to the Tampa Bay Lightning and a nod to the Dallas Stars. However, the draft is tomorrow. Today, October 5th. Draft October 6th. It's been delayed. It's been delayed. It is time for the draft. It's Mock Draft Monday here on Offsides with Ethan Petrick. And we're starting it off. I think everyone knows what's going to happen with number one. You can theorize all you want that it's going to something crazy is going to happen. New York Rangers are going to go out and they're going to take Quentin Byfield, but it's not going to happen. Byfield made a late push. However, a COVID-shortened season probably prevented him from even making a real move at that position. Number one, New York Rangers on the clock. They are going to take Alexis Lafreniere, the left wing at Vermuski. He's long been touted as the top player in the draft. The Rangers don't need to overthink it, and they're going to take Lafreniere and accelerate the sports, all of sports, shortest rebuild possibly ever. It seems like just a few seasons ago, the New York Rangers were still considered a Stanley Cup contender. They have a couple bad seasons, missed the playoffs. However, get Capo Caco last year. This year, they're getting Alexis Lafreniere. Have Mika Zibanejad. Only real question in New York is who's going to replace Henrik Lundqvist. The king is out in New York. Who's going to replace him? Robin Lehner, not an option. Vegas scooped him up or, or kept him off the open market. Who is the Who are the Rangers going to have in the net? That's the only question. This team could be in the postseason as early as next year. But definitely within the next two years, look for the New York Rangers to end Pro Sports' shortest rebuild in history. Number two, my my team, the Los Angeles Kings, they're going to go for much of the same reason as New York. They're going to go with Quentin Byfield, the center out of Sudbury. Good infusion of offense that's really been lacking in L.A. for much of the 2000s. Look for the look, the, the Los Angeles Kings. A lot of my fa- friends who are fans of the team were disappointed not to get the number one overall pick. However, I was anticipating a similar situation as the 2019 draft lottery. 
in that they have potential to get a high draft pick and end up with a terrible draft pick. So the fact that we went from fourth to second, I'm extremely excited to get Quinn Byfield. You know, he could have moved up to number one. He could have he could have made that push. So if that's the kind of player the Kings are getting at number two, I would consider them a winner. Moving on to number three, this is a player that could go number two. There's a lot of talk about him going number two. There's a lot of rumors. However, I see that the Kings go in chalk with Quentin Byfield. Ottawa Senators, they're going to go with Tim Stutzel, the left wing out of Germany. He's an electric scorer. And as I said, he's made a push for number two. He's a highly skilled player, and he could end up being the best player out of this draft. However, we haven't seen enough out of him to justify putting him at two or even one. So Tim Stutzel, pretty great Pretty good player for the Ottawa Senators to get a number three. Also of note, the pick belongs to the San Jose Sharks, who I'm sure are kicking themselves for for giving away that pick. This is a team who thought that they were getting a... They were making a play at the Stanley Cup when they traded for Eric Carlson. Two years later, they end up with the third pick. Ottawa Senators get it. And they're missing out on a player in Tim Stutzel that could really help out a struggling offense in San Jose. Instead, he's going to go and he's going to help out in Ottawa, where they are also struggling on offense. Moving on to number four, Detroit Red Wings. Probably the biggest loser from the whole draft process. Projected to get the number one overall pick. Drop all the way to number four. However, the player they're going to get is not one to be disappointed in. You're never going to be disappointed to have him. However, when you look at what you could have had, it is disappointing. But the Red Wings at number four, they're going to take Cole Perfetti, center out of Saginaw. Honestly, the Red Wings could go anywhere with this pick. But Perfetti, he's a strong playmaker. And I don't think the Red Wings are going to try and overthink or outthink the room. And they're just going to go with the consensus fourth best player in the draft in Cole Perfetti. Number five, Ottawa Senators again. Third pick, fifth pick. They're going to have another pick later in the draft. Definitely going to be a winner of the draft with how many picks they have. Also look for them to be active on draft night with trades, given how many draft picks they have. But number five, Ottawa Senators, they're going to take Lucas Raymond, the left wing, out of Froy Lunda. Solid two-way player for the Senators. He will be, with three years of experience in the Swedish Pro League. So this is a guy who knows what it's like to play against grown men. He's going to be able to step in and potentially contribute immediately for the Senators. At number six, the Anaheim Ducks are going to take defenseman Jake Sanderson. Jamie Jamie Drysdale is in play at this pick. He's another defenseman, one that many would consider is the top defensive option in the draft. However, Sanderson, father played in the NHL. He's going to North Dakota. He's going to develop in that solid hockey system there at UND. So I have, this, I have the Ducks taking a potential f- growth. They're going to they're gonna see the growth. They're going to see the sleeper potential here for Sanderson, and they're going to take the, the second defensive option in the draft who could potentially be one of the best players out of this draft. Number seven, New Jersey Devils. Possibly the biggest surprise of the draft. They're going to go Yaroslav Askarov, goalie out of St. Petersburg in the Continental Hockey League. Devils are looking to shore up one of their weaker positions. This is a team with playoff aspirations. Definitely underachieved last year. And I think you can put a lot of that on Mackenzie Blackwood. He was near the bottom in goals against and save percentage. And so I I see the Devils making a play at Yaroslav Askarov, the the consensus top goalie option in the draft, to shore up the position that has... Been a question mark since Martin Brodeur retired. At number eight, the Buffalo Sabres. I mean, I have them taking Marco Rossi, the center out of Ottawa. He's one of the top center options in the draft. The Sabres have a questionable situation with Jack Eichel. Keep your eye on that. However, I don't think it will affect this pick at all. Look for the Sabres to make the easy decision to take the Take Marco Rossi, who had 120 points last season for the top team in the OHL. You can never go wrong with somebody who's a proven scorer 
in Major Junior Hockey, Marco Rossi, number eight, Buffalo Sabres. Number nine, Anton Lundell. Anton Lundell is a player who is in play at number eight. However, given the fact that Marco Rossi is such an attractive option for the Sabres, I have Lundell falling to number nine with the Minnesota Wild. And the Minnesota Wild will hope that this player, Lundell, will be able to be a replacement in the future for former captain Miku Koivu, who the team announced would not be re-signed this offseason. Lundell's got an exceptional wrist shot. Should be able to should be seeing him getting looks at the top two lines in the next three years. Look for the Wild to make a play at Anton Lundell if he is still available and he falls past number eight or number seven. He's in play at the Devils and at the Sabres. Moving on, rounding up the top ten, the Winnipeg Jets, they're going to Play it safe. They're going to go easy. They're going to take Jamie Drysdale, the, t- the consensus, number one on the boards, defenseman in the draft out of Erie. The Jets are a disappointing and underachieving team right now. They, When they were at their height just two or three years ago, Dustin Bufflin was still a productive member of that blue line. However, fallen off drastically in the last two years. Jamie Drysdale could be a potential replacement. Also, look... Look for Caden Gould, a more Bufflin-esque player at this pick. However, Jamie Drysdale will end up being that the pick, given that he is the top option. If the Ducks happen to take Drysdale, look look for Gould at this pick. But I have Drysdale going number 10 to the Winnipeg Jets, given that he fell past the Anaheim Ducks. At number 11, the National Predators are going to take a player who's locked as high as 7th or as low as 15th. And this is Alexander Holtz. He's a player out of Sweden who is difficult to pinpoint. However, he has an exceptional shot. Predators struggle on the offensive end. Great defensive core there in Nashville. However, a lot of question marks on offense. Look for them to take possibly the top offensive option remaining on the board at number 11. Number 12, I have the Florida Panthers taking Jack Quinn, the center for Ottawa. He scored 52 points, again, on the top team in the OHL. He's a smart player. He's got great vision. He'll be an exceptional number two. Sasha Barkov number on the center for the top line there. He'll slot in on the second line. It'll be Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin light. You know, they'll have a one-two punch unlike any in the league as long as Jack Quinn develops how you would hope he would. At number 13, this pick originally belonged to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the Toronto Maple Leafs will wish they still had this pick. However, it belongs to the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes are going to look to get another option on offense to go along with Sebastian Ajo and Tavo Teravainen. And they're going to take center Seth Jarvis out of Portland, second leading scorer in the WHL last season. He's a motivated, energetic player. He'll give a nice influx of speed and hard work and just metal to that, that offense in Carolina. So look for Seth Jarvis at number 13. Number 14, I have the Edmonton Oilers taking Caden Gould, the defenseman out of Prince Albert. He's a physical presence on the blue line, and he has a blistering slap shot. This is a player that the Toronto Maple Leafs are definitely looking at. However, the Oilers are going to scoop him up. The Oilers, a team that continues to underachieve with Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid on offense. You continue to expect them to finally work finally make their push into the postseason. However, the Oilers continue to underachieve, even though they have two Hart Trophy recipients and two perennial Hart Trophy candidates on their roster. Number 15, Toronto Maple Leafs. They're going to take Rodion Amarov, the left wing out of the Continental Hockey League. He's a fast skilled. He's good on both ends. Potential to be a steal in this draft. However, the Toronto Maple Leafs will be disappointed with with having to take Rodion. They're looking defense. Their defense has been a glaring weakness. One of the biggest reasons why they've been missing missing out on even making it to the Eastern Conference Finals these last couple of years, even though they have one of the most talented offensive rosters in the NHL. So if Caden Gould or Jack Sanderson or Jamie Drysdale, Jake Sanderson, my bad, slip past, and fall to number 15, 
Toronto Maple Leafs will take a defenseman. However, given that the top three options on defense have been taken already, Toronto Maple Leafs will look to go best player available. That's Rodion Amarov, the left wing. Number 16, Montreal Canadiens. They're going to take a bit of a gamble on Dawson Mercer. He's a center out of Shakutami. Not the best skater, but he's solid defensively and offensively. He's never going to be out of position. Number 17, the Chicago Blackhawks. They're going to take center Dylan Holloway out of Wisconsin. I'm a big Badgers hockey fan. Uh, I love watching Dylan Holloway play. He's a powerful forward. He's going to fit into that Andrew Shaw type role for the Hawks. Uh, Blackhawks fans are going to love love him. He's going to be a fan favorite just like Andrew Shaw was. And he's going to fit right in in Chicago. So look for Dylan Holloway at number 17 to the Chicago Blackhawks. Number 18, the New Jersey Devils. We saw them go goalie earlier. They're going to take a defenseman here at number 18. They're going to take Braden Schneider out of Brandon. The Devils hope that this is a guy who can play in all situations. He played in Brandon. He played def- he played power play and he played penalty kill. The Devils are hoping he'll be able to do that at the next level as well. Don't know about his potential to be a top two defender. However, given that he is a guy who can play in all situations in the juniors, I think that the Devils will be perfectly happy to take him here at number 18. Number 19, the Calgary Flames are going to look to add to their scoring punch. They're going to take Connor Zari, center out of Kamloops. He's a skilled, he's a creative player, excellent playmaker. Uh, He plays on the power play and kills penalties. His biggest negative, again, just like Dawson Mercer, he's not the best skater. However, given his passing ability, I think the Calgary Flames will be pleased to take him. Hope that he can slot in and play a big role in their offense. Moving on, number 20, New Jersey Devils again via Tampa Bay and Vancouver. They're going to take a offenseman here with Jacob Perrault, the right wing out of Sarnia. He's a skilled offensive player. He's got exceptional stick handling abilities. And he's got one of the best shots in the draft. He's good on the power play. He can pass the puck. He can move the puck. This is a guy who could... Another steal potential here with Jacob Perrault. However, Devils going to get him at 20. And they're going to be pleased with that pick. Number 21, Brendan Brisson. Center out of the United States Hockey League. Played for Chicago. He's skilled, creative playmaker, good passer. He can finish at the net. He's not the fastest skater again. He's probably the reason why you see a lot of these guys... In the, in the teens, late early 20s, late teens. However, another player that's going to fit right in, in in Columbus, and they're going to be pleased to have him. Number 22, New York Rangers. They, we saw them take a left wing earlier. They're going to do it again with Lucas Reichel out of the out of Germany. He's an excellent skate maker, skater, playmaker, and passer. You can't ask for much more in an offensive player. New York Rangers going to take Lucas Reichel. Hope that he can fill that left wing position behind Alexis Lafreniere, potentially on the second or third line. At number 23, the Philadelphia Flyers, they're going to help out goalie Carter Hart with Helg Granz, the defenseman out of Sweden. He's an offensive-minded defenseman. However, he's produced exceptionally in the pro leagues in Sweden for a defenseman. And the Flyers will take him and hope that he can be a producer for them, a contributor for them in the next two to three years. And number 24, potential for a reach here with the Washington Capitals take Noel Gunler, the right wing, also out of Sweden. This is a high upside pick. He spent a lot of he spent a little bit of time in the Swedish Pro League, scored four goals, got nine assists in limited action. He did not see a lot of ice time in the 45 games he was suited up for in Sweden, which is why I see a lot of high upside here. Given that he was seeing limited time, 13 points is notable. And that's why I think the Washington Capitals are okay taking the risk here on Gundler. They're going to take him at right wing. Hope that he can slot in across from Alexander Ovechkin at the tail end of his career. We'll see how that situation progresses. However, number 24, Washington Capitals, Noel Gundler. Number 25, another potential for a little bit of a reach here. Colorado Avalanche are going to select center Murat Kuznetsov. The center out of St. Petersburg, the Russian Russian Junior Leagues. He's an electric offensive player, great vision, exceptional skater. 
He's got the ability to pass it all around the ice. And he's got a willingness to go into and just be a scrappy player altogether. An exceptional 200-foot game. you got to love what you see out of this guy. And I feel like the Colorado Avalanche could be considered a reach at the time of the draft. However, they could end up with the steal of the draft as well. And number 26, the St. Louis Blues will select Justin Barron, defenseman out of Halifax. He was projected to be a top 10 pick before last season. He could be a steal here again. At the end of the first round, you're looking for a couple of those guys who maybe had a couple of concerns in one area, but could end up being a steal if they figure it out at the next level. He's an offensive-minded defenseman again. That's a premium now in the NHL. Shane Gosses Bear made it cool. Now everyone else is looking for that. Um, Eric Carlson also exceptional offensive-minded defenseman. Brent Burns as well. Look, look for the St. Louis Blues to take a flyer on Justin Barron, who struggled with blood clots this season and kept him out of a lot of games for Halifax. However, if he does return to his top 10 form, this could be the biggest steal of the draft for the St. Louis Blues. Because of his, because of his potential to be a steal, also look for him at play. As high as 15 with the Toronto Maple Leafs. However, I do not see him going that early given his his blood caught issues. At number 27, I have the Anaheim Ducks taking another defenseman. Uh, William Willinder out of Moto Jr. in the Sweden Juniors. His pro cop is Victor Hedman. And if the Ducks can get Victor Hedman at number 27, I don't think anyone in Anaheim will be complaining. Victor Hedman, we saw him be a major contributor on the blue line for those t- Tampa Bay Lightning. So if this is the player you could potentially get at number 27, I think that the Anaheim Ducks would do that. No questions asked. Number 28, the Ottawa Senators with their third pick in the draft. They're going to be taking Ridley Gregg, center out of Brandon. He's small, which is why I don't see him in play at number 27 with the Ducks. I could see them going offense. But because of his size, I have him falling back a couple picks to the Senators. He's small, but he's a scrappy player. He's willing to get in those, those tough areas, grind, get the puck out. Ottawa Senators, Ridley Gregg. Continue to build up that offense in Ottawa. The Vegas Golden Knights, Jeremy Poirier, defenseman out of St. John at the 29th pick. Exceptional skating skating ability, and he's got big play potential. However, bit of a gamble for the Knights. However, that fits in with the Vegas mindset. You know, take a bit of a gamble on Jeremy Poirier. Number 30, Dallas Stars. They're going to take Hendricks. Hendricks. LaPierre, center out of Shikunami, scored 17 points in 19 games. Could have improved his stock if he hadn't been limited by immense struggles with concussions. I believe he had four within 10 months. Bit of an alarm, a bit, bit alarming. It's probably going to keep him from going too high. Uh, this is about the ceiling I see for, for Hendricks in this draft. Could end up being a, potent, a lot better player. However, we saw the Dallas Stars struggle offensively in the, in the playoffs. I'm going to go offense early. Kid who is a not a proven scorer, but showing he can score. Moving on to number 31, San Jose Sharks. They're going to take the best player available. They missed out on their third pick. That stings. To get rid of this, a little bit of that sting, you're just going to go best player available. They're going to take Ryan O'Rourke, defenseman out of Sault Ste. Marie. They're hoping that O'Rourke could potentially be a replacement for the aging Brenton Burns. Burns, he not, he's getting up there in years. He's about 34 years old. Uh, you look, that's not really typical. Burns, definitely an, an exception to the rule. I'd say normally you get around 31, 32, and you speed, your speed begins going. NHL teams look to go another direction. So, Sharks, I'm going to look for his replacement in this draft. Take the top defenseman left at the bottom of the first round, Ryan O'Rourke. That's how I see the draft playing out. Moving on to a different topic. Touched on this briefly at the beginning of the show. Bleacher Report released an article last week, which they called their NHL 2019-2020 2019-2020 final power rankings. I can't believe that they would call this a final power ranking for the season we just finished. Number one reason, the Lightning 
who just won the Stanley Cup. I would like to repeat that they just won the Stanley Cup are not number one on this list. How do you put a team who just won the championship in a league as not the best team? I understand that they might not have been the most talented team. They might not have been the most talented roster, but they just proved they were the best team. The Tampa... The Toronto Maple Leafs have all the talent in the world, but they can't get past the first round. If the Lightning can prove that they can get past the first round, let alone win the Stanley Cup, I think that proves that they're the number one team in the NHL. This is ridiculous. I am so fired up about this that I'm going to be doing a top 10 power rankings next episode, as well as winners and losers from the draft. Bleach Report's got me so fired up. It's ridiculous. You cannot look at a team who just won the championship and tell them that they're not the best team in the league for that season. Wrapping up the show today, you can catch me next on Takeout Tuesday, which will be airing tomorrow at 2. And then Safe Saturdays U, airing on Friday again at 2. And as always, you can catch me on the Safe Saturdays podcast airing every Saturday at 10 a.m. Other than that, always remember to save Saturdays, guys.